Jesus has dealt with a lot of demons in his career. A lot of them are all dressed up like the religious people, indwelling them. And some were just out in the wilderness there. One in the Gadarene demoniacs, they were dressed in rags and naked and whatever they had on, it was nearly nothing. And they had beaten themselves and whatever, but look at the ones that were demon-possessed. You don't think Caiaphas wasn't demon-obsessed a little bit? Or the leaders there that, that called him, or even Judas Iscariot? Of course, it said the devil entered into him. Now here we are in the first chapter of the Gospel according to Mark, caught a mark on, and verse number 35 in the first chapter. And uh, I did preach this sermon in the October the 2nd, 2016 at Valley Baptist Church. And uh, I'm translating it instead of reading the Greek, Kai. Proe, Enika, Leon, Anastas, Exelthane, Kai, Apelthane, Ace, Eremon, Topon, Kake, Pros, Euketo. And early, from 3 to 6 a.m. in the morning, this watch is, early in the morning from 3 to 6 a.m., and by night, in the night, and this is a in a ka. This is a um, word that means in the night. The nux, nux is night. And it says very, Leon, very much. Having stood up, he went out. Having risen up, he went out, and he departed unto the desert, the wilderness, a wilderness place, and there he kept on praying. He was in constant prayer. He was, actually what it says here, that he was, from the very essence of his being, he was in constant prayer. Have you ever just came to God and your whole body, your mind, your spirit, your soul, your body was always all just completely engulfed in prayer. You was immersed in prayer and that's what happened here. And where did Jesus go to do this? In the wilderness. Get away from everybody. He had to get away from everybody and pray. I remember I had a tormented life uh, a marriage, a tormented married life, and I didn't want to go home. <laughs> I didn't want to go home. And I'd take off to the mountains and go up there and just spend the whole week in the mountains, just, just out there in nature, looking and watching the animals, sometimes hunting, uh, cooking, and uh, whatever. I just was rejuvenating, <laughs> rejuvenating. And it said that he kept on praying. He prayed through his sorrow. He prayed through his sorrows. Verse number 36 now. Kai kata doit sang. Auto simon kai hoi meth auto kai uron auton kai lagusen auto. And uh, they hunted him down. He couldn't go be alone for very long until they started hunting him down. The words hunt down, kata and deoke, it means to track down. They tracked him down. Simon, and also the ones with him, and they found him, and they kept on saying to him, Hote Pontes Zetusen Si. Because all 
they are looking for, they are seeking you. Everyone's seeking you. Why did you take off out here? He had to charge his battery. He had to go back out there in the wilderness. Don't you think it was wearing him down to see all this pain and misery that he was meeting every day? And then the opposition of the religious leaders over there sitting there and, and sneering at him and giving him the evil eye. All the time that doing this, this was taking a lot of energy. He was hungry, he was tired, he was sleepy. And yet he couldn't rest. Because all the ones, they keep on seeking you. The word here, they tusen, comes from they deal. And it means to seek for gain. They want something from you. You know, you, uh, <laughs> you don't hear from your children a lot of times until they want something. <laughs> They might get real excited if you're on your deathbed. Friends don't do that. People that love you don't do that. They're seeking him for gain. They're seeking him because they want something from him. Now, some people, one, one man came to him and said, uh, I, I want you to, to my brother and I, uh, we... Uh, we have an inheritance coming. I want you to settle the inheritance. They were seeking, that person was seeking him for gain, and that's all. That's all, just gain. Now, what if a man is seeking to him? He's been sick for a long time. How about being, being lame? How about being blind, deaf, having leprosy or whatever? Sure, they're seeking him for gain. They want to get better. They want to get better. But some seek, sought him for gain. Verse number 38 now. Kai legay autos agomen aliku ace tos ekomenos ko komo poles hina kai eke keruxo ace atuto gar excel thing. And he said to them, and he keeps on saying to them, this is, he's try, he, he is deliberating with them, and he keeps on talking to them. Let us go, agomen. Remember that word agomen mean, Marilyn? That I, Come. There we go, agomen. We go. Elsewhere. A little adverb, page 15 in the Analytical Greek Lexicon, ale kothen. To another place. Let's go to another place. Unto the a nearby. Uh, this word here, ekomenos. This means a place clinging nearby. Close by. Staying close by. A town or a village. A town or a village. Actually, towns or villages is plural. In order that, also, in that place, I might proclaim, I might preach. Caruso. Now this word is first person singular, first air, subjunctive, active. I might do this if they hear, if they allow me. I will do this if they allow me. Unto this, for this reason, for how over this reason I came forth from heaven unto clay, into this earth. I came here to do this. I'm very tired tonight. I don't know why, but I am extremely tired. And Marilyn told me, why don't you just go in there and go to bed? That's because I have this to do. God left me in this world to do what I'm doing right now. When I'm doing this, I know I'm directly in the will of God. And I want to do this until I can't do it anymore. And sometimes that may be tomorrow or the next day. I'm an old man. But when I'm here, I want to do this. I went into a place here a while back, down to Bakersfield, and I saw some people that I knew and really surprised me in the restaurant. Some of them were from far away. And uh, when I went in there, I was quiet, like I normally am around crowds. And I asked one of the people I knew there, and uh, he came out and uh, talked with me a little bit. 
I was glad to see them, so glad to see them. And then I saw him afterwards a little bit, and he said, you know what we're talking about? He's talking about you. He said, a legend walked through there, people. A legend walked through there. Not a legend because of me. It's because of what God has allowed me to do. I shouldn't live this long, but God left me live this long, and he gave me a mind, no matter, no matter about what things have happened to me, which should have disabled me from doing what I'm doing. But God gave me the ability to do this, and I'm thankful for it. I am thankful that God has given me a long life, and I preached over 10,000 messages for Him. For Him. And the Greek and the Hebrew that I've taught, all the lessons I've taught, is for Him. That's why He leaves me here. Jesus said, I came for this purpose. And I'm here for this purpose tonight. And he came preaching. Kai el thane karuson ace tase and a gogaze aton ace holain tane galileon kai ta daimonia ek balon. And he came preaching. He came proclaiming. Nominee, singular, masculine, present, partner, simple, active. He came doing this continually continually preaching unto the synagogue unto the synagogues <clears throat> their synagogues not his synagogues their synagogues unto the entire area of Galilee the whole ten cities a hundred and fifty thousand people listening to the voice of the Son of God and the demons and the devils he kept on casting out. The demons and the devils he kept on cleansing out. Now, Jesus was healing people. First of all, he looked at them with great compassion. Because he had a heart of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For God sent in the him unto the world, not to condemn the world, because the world was already condemned, that it might have life. Now, Jesus is coming here. The main reason that he's in Galilee, this is the whole axis of the world right there. This is the crossroads of the world. But there's 150,000 people here. And he's, he's doing all of these miracles that he's doing to prove one thing, that I am the Son of God. I am Hamashiach, the Messiah. And I've come here to die for you. They're going to crucify me in Jerusalem, but I'm not going to stay dead in the grave. I'm going to rise again. The Bible says that Jesus said, you destroy this temple and I'll raise it up in three days. After, after three days, I'll raise it up. The Bible says that the eternal spirit raised him from the dead. And the, the Bible said the Father raised him from the dead. The whole triune God raised him out of that grave. The cleansing of a leper, now, a leper. Leprosy could only be cured as far as they were concerned by the power of God. It was an incurable disease. Kai erketai pros auton lepros. Parakalon auton kai gono peton. Legon auto hote eon thales dinase me. You know what I just read to you? I read to you the inspired Word of God. God breathed. Every translation is a translation, but this one's God breathed right here. I just read it to you as God gave it through John Mark to put down on paper, and this is the inspired Word of God. In the original languages, every tense, mode, and voice is inspired. It's God breathed. You just heard it. Now let's go back and translate it into your language. What it said in the original inspired language. And he comes for himself, third person singular, present, indicative, middle, he wanted to. 
Jesus wanted to go here. Toward him, the leper. This leper came toward Jesus. Jesus came in that area because the leper was there. And when the leper finds out that Jesus is there, he comes by his own volition because he knows that only this man can heal me. Only this man can heal me. Because here is God's only holy son. And he comes for himself because he wants to toward him a leper. A leprous person. And he's begging him, calling him, beseeching him, nominating singular, masculine, present, participle, active. He kept on doing this. He doesn't ask him one time. He said, Jesus, 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 please, Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Yahshua. He keeps on begging and beseeching and entreating and imploring him. And having fallen upon his knees, having fallen upon his knees, saying to him that if, if, eon, by the way, this is a, this is a third class conditional particle. There's a first class, second class, third class, fourth class conditional particles. This is the third class conditional particle. It's an if, but it isn't an if in some ways. Let's look and see what it means. Third class conditional particle, undetermined, but with definite prospect of determination and fulfillment. It all depends upon one thing. That if can turn into a sense, but it depends upon Jesus. He said to him, if you may will. Second person singular, present, indicative, or present, subjunctive, active. If you may will. You have the power. He's making a statement of faith here. Jesus, I know who you are. And if you will, I know that you have the power. The dynamis. In the dynamis power, Jesus created the heavens and the earth. He spoke him into existence. He spoke him into existence. And by the way, they didn't come ex nihilo. They came out of him. And he is not nothing. He is something. The creation came from God. Not out of nothing. It came from God. Everything that was spoken into existence came from his essence. From him. God held the whole universe in solution in his spirit until he spoke it into existence and it became. And this one that created the heavens and the earth, he said, I know you can make me well. You are able me to cleanse. A leper, when he came into an area where, where population was, he had to call out, unclean, 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 unclean. Here comes an unclean person, I'm him, unclean, unclean, get away from me, unclean. And this man said, I know that you are able to cleanse me. Now when Jesus cleanses this man, he has to go to his local synagogue and show himself to the priest. And to the scribe, they write down in a piece of paper that this man has been cleansed from, from leprosy and it's by the act of God. It's an act of God. It just didn't happen, it's an act of God. Every time that Jesus cleansed the lepers, he was proving that he's Messiah. And Matthew 8, 1 through 4, and Luke 5, 12 through 16 are cross references to this. Every time they gave a leper a, what they might call a significant, a certification of being cleansed, it proved that Jesus was Messiah. Kai splodnistes, ek tenas, ten kera ato, hipsato, kai lege ato, thilo, katharistes. And 
and having been full of literally what it says here, Jesus' guts were moved. Literally. His compassion. And compassion many times, how many times you have butterflies when you're afraid or you see something? How about seeing a child that is, uh, your child that is uh, being maimed at the moment? I told a story. I was going out on visitation on Saturday. I'd go and visit all my little church kids that we're picking up on a bus every Saturday. And my son came on his bicycle and asked me if he could go down and ride down to his friend's house. And I told him, be careful. But go ahead and do it. Be very careful. Not long after, just a few minutes later, after he took off, I heard the screeching tires of an automobile and screams. And I thought for sure it was my son there that had been run over. And a car was on top of a child and his bicycle. When I got down there, I saw it was somebody else's child. My guts were churning until I got there. And when I got there, they churned again to see the little boy maimed and hurt. But the relief was so much that it wasn't my son. This is the type of expression, splang, splang niste, splang niste. Not only singular masculine, first air is participle. Deeply seated affection. Being moved by deep compassion. The viscera of your very soul is churning and yearning in compassion. He stretched out his hand, literally the hand of him, and he fastened on to him. He touched him. No one else could touch or would touch this leper, but the Son of God, the very Holy One of God, touched this unclean leper's hand. He fastened on to him. Not only did he touch him, he fastened on to him. He latched on to him. He latched on to him from the very middle, midst of his soul, his middle voice. Middle voice. From the very midst of his being, he latched on, he grabbed a hold of this man. As you hold someone that you love so much, you hold them from the depths of your soul. And that's what Jesus did. He latched on to this man. And he says to him, I will. I will. I will, hello, I will, for you to be cleansed and to stay that way. I wish you to be cleansed and I wish you to stay cleansed. Number 42, Kai uses a pale thing, off out hey he let pra kai ekra thiste. A ka thariste. And immediately, again, here Mark uses this term, this little adverb here, immediately it departed from him the leprosy. And he had become clean. He had been caused to become clean. Third person singer, first aorist, indicative passive voice. He was called to become clean. 43 now. Kai embrim me salmonos auto youthus ek balain autom. And having uh, charged or admonished him sternly. Now this term here, it means bottle up, to bottle up. It means to snort from within. It meant to uh, snort as a horse fiercely snorts when you grab a hold of a horse and he's wild. And it says, and having charged and monitored him sternly with indignation, 
to him, immediately he cast out him. He cast him out. Let's look at this word here in our translation. Go up to this point. Verse number 40 says, And a leper came to him, beseeching him, and falling upon his knees before him, saying to him, If you are willing, you can make me clean. And he was moved with passion. He stretched out his hand and touched him, and he said to him, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately the, le the leprosy left him, and he was cleansed. And he sternly warmed him immediately and sent him away. Now, why did in the world did he do that? He sternly warned him. He, he with great, the same way that he healed him, he sternly warned him, warned him, and told him to go away. And verse number 44, Kai lege ato hora medane medane epes ala hepage se aton dexon Kai Ere Kai Pros Aneke Perito Katharismu Su. And he says to him, Behold, no one nor anything you may tell, but you go yourself and you present yourself in the sight of the priest. And you offer a offering concerning the cleansing and the purification of you. You go to the high priest. You don't tell anybody what happened. Don't tell them that I did it. You go to the priest and you tell them that you've been cleansed and you show yourself to him. You make yourself plainly seen that you no longer have leprosy. And they're going to write you a bill, a certification of good health. And that will prove that I am Messiah. Don't tell them what happened first. You show yourself to them first. 45. Ha, pros, et toxin, moses, te eis, materion, autois. Which Moses has commanded to, he has assigned, he has appointed to you, he has directed you and enjoined you as a testimony of evidence to them. That word ace there, extension of limitation of the thought of verbal action, because he has done this for you to show testimony and evidence, martyrion, to them. Verse number 45. O de excel thon, exato, kurusain, pala, kai, dia, themisain, ton, logon, poste, mekete, aton. Then este, paneros, es, polin, es el tain, ala, or all, exo, f, eremus, topois, Ain, Kai, Exanto, Pros, Auton, Pon, Tothin. I read 45 and 46. Let's go back and translate them both. Moreover, the one having proceeded forth, he began for himself to preach much and to publicize the word so that no longer he was able to manifest himself publicly unto the city and to go and enter in but with outside with outside outside doors or outer doors and in desert places he kept on being and they kept on coming to him from all parts and every side from all parts and every side they kept on coming to him Jesus couldn't even go in the cities anymore. The cities had houses and things, and there were so many people that he had to go out in the desert area so they could surround him. Because of his fame, because he was doing good. 
Jesus isn't going to kill anybody. He wants to heal and to prove he was Messiah. And he's still doing that today. Jesus doesn't want to throw you in hell. He wants to heal you and put you in heaven forever. Heal you spiritually. Heal you from the depths of your soul that you can walk with him in the streets of glory. Our Father, we send this message out for your honor and for your glory. Please use it to touch people's lives. Help them to love you, call upon you, trust you every day for their very existence. Please forgive me for I failed you. In Jesus' name I pray.